The pointing vector. A cylindrical conductor with a circular cross section has a radius A and a resistivity rho and carries a constant current I. Part A. What are the magnitude and direction of the electric field vector E at a point just inside the wire at a distance A from the axis? Okay, so we have the current flowing in this direction. That's the direction of the electric field. And the current density and electric field are related by Ohm's law. The current density J is equal to the conductivity sigma times the electric field. Or we can write it this way. The electric field E is the resistivity rho, resistivity rho multiplied with current density J. So what I have just written here is nothing but Ohm's law. All right. And so we can see that the electric field points parallel, parallel to the current direction. And the electric field magnitude E is equal to rho times J, which is rho times the current that flows uniformly within the cylindrical wire, I, divided by the cross-sectional area, pi A square. So that's the electric field. And the direction of the electric field is parallel to the current. And that's also uh, parallel to the axis of the cylinder. It is uniform, uniform across the cross section of the cylinder. The current density is I over pi A square, uniform current, uniform electric field within the wire. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. Part B, what are the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field vector B at the same point? Which point? At a distance A from the axis. Okay, now this time, here is the current coming out, I, uh, or current density J, if you wish. Now, if you follow the current direction with your right thumb, the four fingers of the right hand curl in this direction that indicates the direction of the magnetic field. And we can use Ampere's law. So first of all, using right hand rule, uh, the magnetic field, B field, magnetic field, is in the counterclockwise, CCW, counterclockwise direction. All right, so magnetic field is in the counterclockwise direction. Now using Ampere's law, the closed path integral B dot DL is equal to B times now, our dl vector here is the distangential vector. So if I complete the full circumference, the closed path integral gives me b times 2 pi a. That's the circumference of this uh, circle. So this is b times 2 pi a is equal to mu zero times the current enclosed by this uh, surface bounded by the Amperian loop. And because we are at the surface of the wire, that's the total current. So that's mu zero times I. And this is nothing but Ampere's law. Okay, so with that, the magnitude of the magnetic field at the surface of this conductor is equal to mu zero i 
divided by 2 pi a and it is in the counterclockwise direction indicated by this figure. Let's move on to part C. What are the magnitude and direction of the pointing vector at the same point? The direction of the pointing vector is the direction in which electromagnetic energy flows into or out of the conductor. Now, uh, if this is my radial vector r hat, unit vector r hat, and this is my tangential unit vector theta hat, and this, this makes an angle theta with respect to the x-axis here, you can see this angle is theta. The total uh, angle here, this is 90 degrees because it's tangential. So this angle is 90 minus theta, but this angle here is also 90 degrees. So that implies this angle should be equal to theta. So theta, 90 minus theta, theta, uh, and this one is 90 degrees. Okay, so uh, the angle here is 90 degrees. So we can write the theta hat in terms of i hat, j hat, and k hat here. So this is x, y, and z axis. Now, uh, looking at this convention here, if the current is coming out of the page, so if this is j coming out, uh, that's also the direction of the electric field, I can see that the electric field vector can be written as uh, rho times the current density, rho current i divided by pi a square in k hat direction. The magnetic field b vector is mu zero i over 2 pi a and as we have found out in part b it's in the counterclockwise direction that's the direction of theta hat so this is in theta hat direction the unit vector theta hat and because of this uh, setup here you can see that theta hat uh, can be written in terms of i hat and j hat so it's going to be cosine theta j hat minus sine theta i hat so uh, the components, the projection of theta hat onto the Cartesian uh, axis gives me, uh, so let's rewrite the magnitude here, mu zero i over 2 pi a. We have minus sine theta i hat plus cosine theta j hat for the theta hat direction. And uh, the magnitude of this vector is also square root of sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 1. And the direction uh, is given by minus sine theta i hat plus cosine theta j hat minus sine theta, the projection onto the x-axis, plus cosine theta j hat, the projection onto the y-axis. Now we're ready to write the uh, pointing vector. The pointing vector S is 1 over mu 0 electric field cross product with the magnetic field. Now, let's check what happens when theta is equal to zero degrees. When theta is equal to zero degrees, electric field is in k hat direction. So I will have k hat cross with magnetic field. Theta equals to zero gives no x component. It gives me a y component, so it is k hat cross j hat. What is k hat cross j hat? So i hat, j hat, k hat, cyclic permutations. k hat cross j hat is minus i hat. So that's the positive direction here. Uh, so that means this is going to be minus i hat. And when theta is equal to... 90 degrees, uh, then I have cosine 90 is 0, sine 90 is 1, so minus i hat. So this will be k hat cross with minus i hat, k hat, k hat cross i hat gives j hat, k hat cross with minus i hat gives 
minus j hat. Okay, so I realize that uh, when theta is equal to zero, the electric field is out of the page. The magnetic field is uh, making an angle. This is theta is equal to zero degrees case. Uh, then I can see that the magnetic field points in j hat direction. So k hat cross j hat gives me minus i hat. The pointing vector points radially inward. When theta is equal to 90 degrees, uh, let's see here. When theta is equal to 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees in this case, uh, I would have the magnetic field pointing in this direction, in i hat direction. So uh, sine of minus 90 would give me a, a minus sine 90. So this would be plus i hat. So this would be pointing in i hat direction. Uh, the electric field points in k hat direction. So E cross B gives me this j hat direction. So when theta is equal to minus 90 degrees, it's j hat direction. When theta is equal to plus 90 degrees, on the other hand, then I have this set up. The magnetic field points in minus i hat direction. And the electric field points out of the page in k hat direction. And I see that the pointing vector is going to point in this direction. So I can see that the pointing vector has this uh, radially inward direction. So the pointing vector points radially inward. So I have found the direction of the pointing vector. And what about the magnitude of the pointing vector? The magnitude S is equal to 1 over mu 0. The magnitude of the electric field rho i over pi a squared. Magnitude of the magnetic field mu 0 i over 2 pi a. Now we can see that these mu zeros will cancel out. And I will obtain the magnitude of the pointing vector to be rho i squared divided by 2 pi squared a cube. So that's the magnitude of the pointing vector. Or I can write this as a vector uh, using the r hat vector here. Or I can say that the pointing vector has this magnitude rho i square divided by 2 pi square a cube and it points in minus r hat direction which is radially inward direction. So that answers part c of the problem. Part d Use the result in part C to find the rate of flow of energy into the volume occupied by a length L of the conductor. Hint, integrate S over the surface of this volume. Compare your result to the rate of generation of thermal energy in the same volume. Discuss why the energy dissipated in a current carrying conductor due to its resistance can be thought of as entering through the cylindrical sides of the conductor. Okay, now the magnitude of the pointing vector s which is rho i squared divided by 2 pi squared a cube is the power per perpendicular area that's entering the conductor so this power is then rho i square divided by 2 pi square a cube 
multiplied by the perpendicular area for the pointing vector here is the side area of the uh, surface area of the cylinder, which is 2 pi a times L for a length L. So 2 pi a times L. Now you can see that this a cubed becomes a squared and the pi squared becomes pi at the bottom. And I also get rid of these twos. So uh, the pointing vector is perpendicular, perpendicular to the surface of the cylinder. Therefore, the area, the perpendicular area that I'm considering here is 2 pi AL, the surface area of the cylinder. So the power being delivered to this conductor is as a result, rho L divided by pi A squared multiplied by I squared, which is the resistance. Rho L over A is the resistance. So resistance times I squared, which is the power dissipated by the resistance of the cylindrical conductor. So we find that the rate at which electrical energy enters through the cylindrical surface of the conductor is equal to the rate at which it is dissipated by the resistance of the conductor. So we can think of the energy input per unit time by the electromagnetic wave as the energy being consumed by the uh, resistance of the conductor because this power input is equal to the power dissipated. So that answers part D of the question. Okay, so here we have a cylindrical conductor, uniform current density J, electric field is uh, rho times j, resistivity times j, that's Ohm's law, and electric field points in the direction of the current. Um, so that answers part A, rho i over pi a square for a uniform current distribution. Now, the magnetic field that's associated with this uniform current is found using Ampere's law. The right-hand rule tells me when your thumb points in the direction of the current, the four fingers of the right hand curl in the counterclockwise direction indicating that b is in the counterclockwise direction and if you take this amperian loop closed path integral b dot dl is mu zero times current enclosed by the surface that is generated by this loop uh, which is i so mu b times 2 pi a uh, because the magnetic field vector is parallel to the dl vector here at each point on this uh, surface. b times 2 pi a is mu zero i enclosed, and this encloses the full current i here. So it is mu zero i divided by 2 pi a, that's the magnetic field b, and it's in the counterclockwise direction. Now, uh, constant current i flows in the wire. I can write the electric field as rho i over pi a square using these Cartesian coordinates in the k-hat direction. So I'm looking at this wire from this point of view here. I can see the current coming out of the page. And the magnetic field is in theta-hat direction then. The theta-hat direction it has a component cosine theta j-hat minus sine theta i-hat, as you can see from this geometry. Uh, so... I, if I take the cross product of these two, I will get 1 over mu 0 e cross b, the pointing vector. Now, e cross b, I have tried for different angles. At theta is equal to 0, I have j hat direction for the magnetic field. That is uh, this scenario here. Electric field is coming out of the page. The pointing vector then points in minus i hat direction. If theta is equal to 90 degrees, then I have... Uh, minus i hat for the uh, magnetic field, k, 
k hat for the electric field k hat cross with minus i hat gives me also this radially inward direction so i see that the pointing vector points radially inward and it is 1 over mu 0 e times b for perpendicular electric and magnetic field it's going to give me rho i square over 2 pi square a cube as the magnitude uh, or i can write this as the magnitude in the direction minus r hat in part d when I look at a length L of this conductor, since the S vector magnitude describes the power per perpendicular area, the intensity, uh, the power turns out to be S magnitude multiplied by 2 pi AL because that is the perpendicular area for this pointing vector. The pointing vector points radially inward, so the perpendicular area is the surface area of the cylinder. So that gives me rho L over pi A square, rho L over the area, cross-sectional area, which is resistance times I square. So this, is, this tells me that the power, that the energy input per unit time into the conductor is equal to the energy dissipated per unit time by the resistance of the conductor.